Well, welcome back. We're looking at footage of the FTM 500, presumably in action somewhere in Asia. We don't have it in our hands yet, but we've learned more since the original announcement. The bad news is the U.S. release window has passed. Well, I don't have any updated release information. I have been poking around in the Japanese manual and, of course, looking at the video that we're seeing right now. I use my phone to translate the section I'll be talking about today. My first reaction while scrolling through is how familiar everything looked. The layout of the manual and the screen grabs included, it fits nicely into what I've come to know about the FTM line. My focus in this video is the exterior design. We've seen photos of the head unit, but seeing it in video and in the manual, I'm getting a better sense of the scale and of some of the specific features that I did not know previously. No surprise, but wow, the head unit looks deeper than any of the other models in the lineup. It's certainly deeper than I expected, even though we knew from the announcement that it was going to be pretty large. I wouldn't say it's outrageous, but it definitely adds significantly to the total length of the radio if it were to be snapped onto the body. The dials appear to stand out more than the 200, for example. Maybe not really, but they just they look like they have a lot of depth to them. When you look at the side of the radio, this is where things get interesting. But notice the screws there. Uh, near item 1 and pointed out specifically by item 5. It appears to show that the radio head can be tilted more to taste. And we can see that in the darker graphic on the lower right in the screen grab. With the arrows pointing back and forth. That seems pretty awesome. Gives us some more possibilities for accommodating where the radio might be mounted in your vehicle or how you might use it in your uh, shack at your house. The other thing that I was personally excited about, and I don't think I've seen other mention of this, is an accessory for mounting the head unit to the body of the radio. It's a little confusing at first to look at this, but there's an extra plate there with a, a protrusion kind of in the middle. Uh, but when I used my phone to translate, uh, it became apparent that this is another way to adjust the head angle to, to taste. So if you look down towards the bottom of this screenshot at item number three, right against the head unit you can see what looks like a ball and it's being shown uh, in an assembly like a ball head on a tripod for example. There's a set screw there and then you could tilt the head unit more specifically to taste and then tighten it up. Notice the hole in the plate for the cabling and just overall, this looks like a very nice addition. You're not locked into just a tilt up or down. You could actually angle it a little left or a little right. So kudos there. I really like this feature. Switching back to the front of the head unit, we can see the push buttons surrounding the big dial. We see PMG for... Those of you who've been using the 200, this is a very familiar feature and one that I think is a very nice addition to this radio that allows you to add five frequencies of your choice, which you can have a visual scan. You may only listen to one frequency at a time, but you will be able to see if there's activity on the other. It just gives you another mode of operation. And another very, very familiar button just to the right of that, the V slash M, which is, of course, how we manage memories in the Yesu world. Uh, allows you to write memories and to retrieve them, etc. And then moving down to the left, lower left below the big knob, we have the band button. And then to the right, that is the back button. Uh, all quite familiar in the Yesu world, so nothing different there other than we've just seen a big swapperoo in um, the layout of this particular radio. Um, then looking at the smaller knobs left and right, 
Uh, we have volumes and squelch being handled by item one. Uh, on the 200, the squelch uh, was on the other side, so a little bit of a change there. I do like being able to operate volume independently, both in A and B channels. That's very nice. And I suppose that would be should be expected in the flagship model. On the top right, we see a function dial, which is described as having a short and long press select abilities. Short press brings up the quick menu, while a long press brings you to the full setup menu. Gone is the F menu button of the 200. Hopefully that points to more discoverable context menus. APRS on the 200, for example, seems unnecessarily difficult because the F menu unexpectedly acted as a context menu trigger. The extra dials on the lower left and right give you controls for the subband without needing to move a frequency or memory or a stored memory from the sub to the main to change things. Item three is the AESS speaker, which stands for Acoustic Enhanced Speaker System. And we see in the manual a few things describing how to get to adjust the settings. And uh, when you look down at item number three, we see a description of the modes that are available. So off means standard sound quality without the Acoustic Enhanced Speaker System uh, in operation. Flat uses AESS without changing the sound quality. That'll be interesting to find out how that actually operates. Why would you want that if it doesn't change anything? High pitch, sound quality that emphasizes the high range. Low pitch, sound quality that emphasizes the low range. And then BPF, sound quality with attenuated high and low frequencies. All in all, I am excited about that. Um, that is different than I had imagined it. Uh, I had originally imagined that as a separate speaker. So if you configure the radio with the head unit separated with some distance to the body, you would still be able to hear a transmission without needing the main speaker to be out from under a seat or somewhere where it would not be audible uh, normally but I don't really think that's what this design implies. I think this is an enhancement as opposed to simply a second speaker. Looking at the top of the radio, we have buttons. Uh, this is the first in the FTM line that has this type of design. Plenty of space, so I guess why not? I don't really think this is going to have a negative impact on usability. Rather, I see this as a accommodation of a design aesthetic that Yace has been working on for a few years now. It just has a much more aggressive look to the entire package. Note the big dial if you look through their other lineup and their recent releases, recent meaning the last few years, you see that repeated over and over with a cluster of buttons around it. So it just has a new design aesthetic, and we had to make room for all the buttons that they wanted to have as a part of this, this package. And the buttons on top do have some new items or changes to how they were, things were previously labeled. Many of the buttons are familiar. You have the group monitor button, the DX button, and then we have one that's labeled s dash DX, which is described according to my translation as temporarily increasing reception sensitivity. And it sounds like a potentially exciting addition. And then we have a double arrow button. This replaces what was previously marked on the 200 as A slash B. I think this is a nice change. It just tells you a little bit more, more about what that's supposed to do. And of course that means swapping the frequency that's loaded in A with the frequencies that's loaded in B, so they will change places. And maybe that sounds confusing, but I think it does have its place. The display button will trigger band scope as it that is known in the FTM line. Not the same as a base station, but does give you a nice look at uh, a range of frequencies and then you can tell if there's activity there. And of course we have the on off button on the far right. 
labeled as item number six. The microphone looks identical to the 200 to my eye. I guess we'll see in person if that turns out to be the case. What I found exciting was the default setting of the P1 key, which you see item eight on the lower left. And it is assigned as a second push to talk. So if you get a transmission in the B channel and you want to respond to it, you can do that without any other adjustment. You just push the P1 button and begin transmission. And the manual shows us a list of potential. And in this page of the manual, we can see some of the other choices we could assign to the P buttons. Record, stop, scan, home channel, repeater shift, reverse, a lot of familiar options there. And uh, I think those are expected. Looking at the three quarter view of the body of the radio, we see the bracket here. And what's interesting to me is uh, it is a quick release design. Uh, that is a feature found on the 200 and one of my favorites of the accessories that come with it. Looking, if you look carefully at the body, you see a line going in the middle of the side there. And that's kind of a rail. That's a, and that's a slot for the rail of the bracket. And it allows you to slide the body onto the bracket and it snaps into place. And in reverse, you just push a lever, which you can see an arrow on the bracket. You push on that and it releases and you can slide the radio right on out. Looking at this screenshot, the front and back of the body of the radio, things are very, very familiar if you've used other models in this lineup. We see the cable input for the for the head unit, for the mic. We have a data port there that allows you to do a firmware update should one be available. And uh, on the lower portion of the screen grab, we can see the antenna mount, the fan, the external speaker outputs. There's an extra one uh, relative to the 200 here so that you can put a speaker for A and B bands. And of course we have the data port between those outputs. And finally, item number three is the power input. And that brings me to the end of what I've got for this particular video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and got some value out of it. If you did, leave me a like, leave me a comment on something you noticed that I haven't pointed out. And I'm looking forward to digging in a little bit further on the operations of the radio that we can see in the video and what we can discover in the manual. And I hope you'll come back for a future video. Until then.